the first, the first thing that we have to do is we have to determine what is the wood that's going to show. And the wood that you bought is hardwood. Um, it is, it's a hardwood and that is a pine. Um, that's select pine. So we use that as the wood that's behind it that will actually hold it. Um, so this will be our front wood. So basically what we have to do, is, do you know the measurements of this? 16 by 20. Right. 16 by 20. Our objective is to allow for about a quarter of an inch in between our painting and the, uh, the frame itself. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is cut the frame where I want it at the corners. And so basically I'm going to give it a quarter of an inch. I'm going to do this all without measuring because that's who I am. Um, but you can. And you want to measure from the inside. So adding a quarter of an inch to my 16 inches. is an inch and a half, right? Or, I'm sorry, that's, a, um, that's adding a half inch. So, in total, this is 16, and I add a whole half inch. That will give me the right measurement. So, 16 and a half should be the inside. But I'm not gonna cut that just yet. I wanna make sure I cut it first, and then I measure my 16 and a half. And I'll write that down reference. Cut. I'm cutting my angle with the facing and uh, flush right against the, uh, the guard here. From there, is using my painting as a guide, I'll measure my 16 and a half inches. So I'll measure from the inside corner. Can you see that? I'll measure from the inside corner here, 16 and a half. And that is the inside of my angle. So I need to draw that angle to give me some kind of semblance of which direction to go. You can cut. All right, so are you shooting? All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it down and very carefully try to align that line with where I made it so that I don't lose anything. measure it one last time and then I'll cut the second strip. The carpenter's trick is to align these two things up and you'll feel it with your fingers that it's perfectly aligned and then I simply make another line on the other side. That way I don't lose any measurement and then I make a cut. cut from there. So in order to ensure that they're exactly the same size you put them together op opposing each other and you use your fingers to ensure that they are exact. Um, the other side is 20 inches, and so I'm simply adding a half inch on because it's a quarter inch on both sides. So if it's a quarter inch on both sides, that's 20 and a half inches. And so I'll cut my other piece of wood for the sides 20 and a half inches from the inside. Okay. 20 and a half from the inside. And then I make the angle again from that corner. Okay. Cut that is I'm gonna do a dry fit. And so I'll hold up my my components, making sure that we are pretty much in alignment. See how nice that looks with the hard wood. We can stain that up if we want to. And that looks pretty good. Um, it's not a perfectly um, square painting, which is funny because um, it's manufactured, but the way to figure out whether or not it's perfectly square um, is you measure from corner to corner. And if you measure from corner to corner, this isn't long enough, but if you measure from corner to corner, it measures exactly the same from one edge to the other, 
25 and a half by 25 and a half, it should be pretty square. Um, so we're looking, we're looking pretty good here. All right, next thing is I move my painting away and I glue it up. And I just need a little bit of glue on each corner. And I'm gonna nail these together as well. So this is just an additional reinforcement of my corners. These don't typically get too beat up. And I put glue on every corner. End grain is the weakest point. Um, the flat part that is open grain is uh, a very strong place to actually glue up anything. But the joint that is the end grain is an irregular end. And because of that, it's difficult to cut and it's difficult to join up. So a little dabble do you together. And then using a nail gun, which I've got here with some finished nails. And I use, I like to use a nail gun for this because um, I just have to put minimal pressure on the actual corner. Um, you want to come around here? Um, but more importantly, it will inset or recess the nail. So I don't actually have to set it in there. So I'm going to position it, put some weight on it. You can use a clamp if you want. And I'm probably going to use a, do one, use a um, filler. within there. I feel pretty good about that. Not bad at all. And then we're going to do the back, the backing so that we can actually raise that up so that it's not inset, which is why you call it a quarter flame frame because it looks like it's flat. First thing that we need to do is we need to determine the depth that this is going to sit in. And if we actually put our wood, because there's going to be a backer or what we call a strainer in there, it's going to inset just the right amount. And that's perfect in my opinion. So we don't actually need to position our inside strainer at any different um, depth beyond the very bottom. And so the very first thing that I'm gonna do is I am going to create a, another, and hopefully this will fit, well, no, that's not the piece I want. Um, I'm gonna create another interior structure that simply bevels from the inside. And so what I'm going to do is cut this, measure the inside exactly, six and a half, or 16 and a half, and I'm going to make the inside 16 and a half. So I'll write that down and help me, which is what my initial measurements were. So once I've gotten one cut, I want to measure the inside, and that's 16 and a half inches. I will measure from the very outside of that cut in order to make my mark, 16 and a half, and that's the point at which I will cut that angle. And I'm ready for a cut. So once I've got this and I know that it drops in and fits, I will 
cut a second one and then I'll cut the other sides to fit. So I'll cut an entire strainer all using internal measurements. Here, I can just set these in um, and essentially just nail from the side and I will reset those. I'll do one about every six inches or so. You want to ensure that you wipe it off with a wet rag, and then you want to go around the entire thing and take great pains to sand it. And you're going to get any pencil lines off, and you're going to get any of that wood filler off. You don't have to worry about sanding in here though, because that's just simply the strainer part. But you want to make sure your edges are nice, and that you've gone all the way around meticulously. And the faster you get that wood filler off, the better it's going to look and the easier it is going to be to sand. And once you've done that and you've created a nice smooth surface, I would recommend painting the inside. So I would re recommend taping off any area you want the wood frame to remain natural or stained. And then either spray painting or just simply using black matte acrylic on the inside strainer, just this, this part here. Now, Katie hasn't, uh, Katie's made a beautiful painting, but Katie has not um, varnished this yet. And so you want to remember the rule is you do not varnish a final varnish until a year after it's completed dry day. So that's why we use a, um, a temporary varnish or a retouch varnish, and they sell that in spray, and they sell that also as a liquid that you can paint on. Now you can buy matte, you can buy um, satin, or you could buy gloss. So she has to kind of figure out what she what surface she would like, and I would recommend she do all of her paintings in the same finish. Now when this is all dry and ready to go in, we simply drop it in after the back has been painted, and we position it, and we can use paper in order to space it out. If we need to, hard stock, um, whatever, in order to keep it in the position we want all the way around. And we kind of use our eye to make sure that there's enough space. Then we turn it over. I'm just going to show you from the back here. We turn it over, and you see that it's inset. But we turn it over from there. And we use short screws. And we do four right into the strainer edge or the canvas stretcher bar right from the back. One, two, three, four, and it's in there permanently. Now you want to make sure that you spend a lot of time to position this exactly where you need it so that it doesn't move when you flip it over. Okay? So you want to use some serious cardstock, if not cardboard, in order to ensure that this is spaced correctly, doesn't move and is perfectly situated. Then, you use these D-rings, and you use the same screws from the back, and you wire it. And that is how you make a photograph.